Good morning, boys and girls. It is Thursday, which means it is time for our nonfiction reader that goes along with our unit this week. And this week we are going to read about professions that save the planet. Now, a profession is something that you do for a job. So maybe your um, mom or dad is a um, checker or clerk at Walmart or another store, that would be their profession. If your mom is um, or dad is a nurse and they work at the hospital to help people get better, that would be a profession. I am a teacher, that is my profession. Well, these people all have professions, All they all have jobs that help save the planet. So we're going to learn about the different kinds of jobs that they have and what they do. And as we talk about them, you might get excited about um, one of these jobs. It might be something you want to do when you grow up. The first thing that we're going to look at is our glossary, which tells us words that are going to be in our story that we might not know. So our first word is apex predators. Now we know what a predator is, right? But what's an apex predator? Animals at the top of the food chain. So we've talked about this quite a bit this year. Um, what animal do you know that might be at the top of the food top of the food chain? That means that um, not very many. They don't have very many predators themselves. Not very many animals eat them, but they eat almost everything. The lion is a good example, right? That is why the lion is called the king of the jungle because they're at the top of the food chain. All right, our next word is consequence. A consequence is the result of an action. Now, every time we do something, whether it's a good choice or a not so good choice, there is usually a consequence. If we make a good choice, then good things happen to us, right? If we do our work for school, we get good scores, we become smarter, and we can have better jobs when we grow up. That's our consequence. Um, if we break a rule that, and make a not so good choice, we might get in trouble, we might get put in timeout, sent to our room. Um, that would be the result of that action. That would be the consequence, okay? N the, our next one is crucial, and crucial means very important. If I said it is crucial for you to drink water every day, that would mean that it's very important for you to drink water every day to stay alive, okay? Dispose, to get rid of or throw away. So we dispose of garbage, okay? So when we um, are done eating and we've used a napkin or a paper towel, we dispose of it by putting it in the garbage can. Hazardous. Hazardous means poisonous or dangerous. Sometimes if um, maybe somebody, maybe there's some workers digging a hole by your house and they might put some um, tape around the hole that says caution, that means it's hazardous. It's dangerous for you to be there. You should not be playing there. Overpopulate. Overpopulate means that there are too many people or buildings in one area. So if there are too many people living in one small house, you might say that your house is overpopulated. If there's too many buildings in one city block, we would say that that city is overpopulated. All right, so let's begin and read about our professions that save the planet. Introduction. <clears throat> Do you love science? There are so many interesting things to learn about from weather to plants to stars and so much more. Do you know what we need? Our world needs big thinkers, compassionate hearts, and innovative minds that want to focus their energy on helping the planet. For now, you can just focus on creating, experimenting, playing, failing, building, succeeding, and researching. That's your job right now, just to learn. 
in a few years when you are ready to think about careers, which is jobs, keep these science-focused jobs in mind. Like we already mentioned, our world needs you. The first job that we're going to talk about is food scientists. Hmm, huh, I wonder what a food scientist is. If it has to do with food, that sounds like something I might want to do. First up for possible careers, we have food scientists. Food scientists can specialize in many different fields. They can focus on the packaging side of things. This means they study how to keep food fresh when it is being shipped to grocery stores. The packaging needs to be durable. That means it needs to be strong, but we don't want it to leave behind a, a ton of trash either. Food scientists can also specialize in how fruits and vegetables are grown and make sure it is safe for humans to eat. In this area, they also want to figure out how to leave the soil healthy and full of nutrients after the produce is harvested. Scientists can help advise farmers on techniques that let them grow their crops without putting a lot of chemicals into the soil. So one thing that happens when we're growing our own food or when farmers are growing our food is they have to spray it to keep the bugs away, but they have to be careful that what they're spraying on the food to keep the bugs away isn't going to be poisonous to the people that need to eat it. And that's why when we buy food at the grocery store or from a farmer's market, we should always wash it really well before we eat it in case it's been sprayed with something. Our next profession is meteorologists. I'll bet you've heard that word before. Meteorologists study and predict the weather and climate. So if you like to keep track of what the weather is every day, this might be a job for you. They can have different jobs from daily weather predictions to research in regards to the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the air that surrounds the earth and acts like a big blanket. Meteorologists notice patterns in the weather that are caused by temperature changes in the water or air. If meteorologists are able to accurately predict a strong storm or drought, they can help people prepare in a manner that has little loss as possible. A drought or a large hurricane could be devastating to people, so damage control is crucial. A drought is when it doesn't rain for a really, really, really long time, like months and months and months and the soil has no water, which means the crops won't grow, there won't be food. So if the meteorologist can predict or guess when that's going to happen, then it helps the farmers, all right? Our next job or profession that we're going to talk about is conversation, or con, it's not conversation, that means talking, conservation scientists. Conservation, in the word conservation, you can see the smaller word conserve, conserve. And conserve means to save. Okay, so a conservation scientist probably is trying to save something. Let's find out. Conservation scientists are also referred to as foresters. They usually have degrees in biology and are trained to manage the natural resources in the forests. They focus on the forest ecosystem and study the plants and animals within it. They will take notes on how human activity impacts the forest by looking at the changes that have occurred. Conservation scientists may help companies plan the best way to clear land if it is needed but they also work to create protected areas, such as parks, so that people can enjoy the green space. Now, this actually happened last year in California. Um, there were a lot of trees in one area and the people in California loved the trees, but because of that, when there was a fire, it burned a lot of area down. 
And so conservationists look at the forest and see if maybe they need to be thinned out a little bit, but they also wanna keep enough trees so the animals have places to live and there's parks for us to visit. So that's kind of a tricky job. All right, our next profession that we're going to look at is a marine biologist. A marine biologist studies all kinds of life, big and small, in oceans and other bodies of salt water. So if you're somebody that likes to be at the ocean or around water or likes fish or animals that live in the water, this might be a job for you. By looking at very small animals like plankton, these scientists can get a good idea of how healthy the ocean is. If the ocean is out of balance, it can throw everything off on the planet. Marine biologists also study large ocean animals like sharks. Humans kill between 30 to 70 million sharks a year just out of sport or out of fear. Our oceans need these apex predators. So sharks are another predator that's at the top of the food chain. Scientists have observed that when shark populations are down, large fish overpopulate and eat all the small fish. When the small fish aren't around to eat the, the algae off the coral, coral reef, the reef is smothered. Marine biologists are incredibly important because their research gives us information that helps push people to take care of our oceans. Okay, the next job that we are going to look at is urban planners. Urban planners use several different sciences in their profession such as engineering and environmental sciences. Their goal is to help cities and smaller communities create long range plans for where they put buildings, parks, neighborhoods, bridges, and roads. If there is no plan, then communities can grow too quickly, which can cause a lot of traffic and overcrowding. The long-term consequence of a bad plan usually means a lot of pollution or damage to our natural resources, like rivers and beaches. Not only do urban planners need to be great scientists, but they also need to have compassion towards the earth and people. So they're the ones that help plan where the businesses will go in a city. Make sure that we still have room for parks and things like that that we need to. Okay, our last one is environmental engineers. An engineer uses science and math to solve problems. An environmental engineer works to solve problems concerning our earth. Specifically, they work on waste removal, recycling, and pollution control for water and air. An environmental engineer might be called in to help come up with a better system for treating wastewater. They also work with factories to reduce the hazardous gases that are being put out in the air. One last example, they can give advice on the best way to dispose of our garbage and all things related to our landfills. Think of environmental engineers as superheroes battling the powers of pollution. We've learned a lot about different professions that will help save our environment. I would like you to get a pencil and piece of paper or notebook and join me back in the next video. We're going to write about three professions that can help save our planet. So you be thinking about three of those professions we talked about that you think you might want to do when you grow up. See you in a minute. Bye.